Column L contains very important data, specifically the kinetic profile for microbial growth or inactivation. These data are recorded in the data entry sheet. Now let's take a look at that sheet. Here we see that column A is the record code or key. Column B is the time, always in hours. And column C is the microbial count. The record code in column A is a unique identifier for a single experiment. We'll examine this in more detail when we look at the sample data workbook later in this video. The time in column B corresponds to the time points where measurements were taken. Remember, this is always entered in hours. Column C is where we record the microbial count for each time point. If colony forming units or CFU were measured, then enter the log 10 value. If optical density was measured, then enter the OD. For any other measurement method, simply enter the value. Now let's look at the data sample workbook. In this workbook, we have entered examples of information. In column A, you see a journal publication. But below that is an example of source information if the data had not been published. These authors studied Bacillus cereus, which you can see in column B. The strain that they used was KM100, which is entered in column C. Column D indicates that Bacillus cereus was pretreated with lactic acid before it was added to the sample. The food they studied was fresh spinach, which is entered in column E. Column F shows that the spinach was raw and that the sample environment contained 400 parts per million lactic acid. Now, since the paper was published, the authors only needed to provide a brief description of the experimental protocol, which we see in column G. Column H shows that the measurement method was colony counts. Columns I, J, and K indicate that the temperatures studied were 5 and 10 degrees Celsius, the pH was 5.5, and the water activity was 0 0.991. Now, let's take a look at the data that the authors recorded in the data entry sheet. Here we can see that there are eight separate data records, that is one record for each experiment. Column F shows an example of how you can produce a unique record code for each of the eight experiments. So here we've used BC to stand for Bacillus cereus, SP for spinach, and then we add the temperature, experimental trial, and replicate. And we do this for each experiment so that each of these eight records has a unique record code. In column A, we enter the same record code in all of the cells that correspond to the time and counts for that experimental record. In this example, there are 10 time points from 0 hours to 170 hours. These are entered in column B. Finally, in column C, we add the count for each time point, 
In this example, the count is measured in log 10 CFU. The example we have just looked at is for a static temperature scenario. However, you may have recorded aspects of the environments during the experiment such as temperature, pH, and or the water activity. If this happened, then enter this information in columns E, F, or G for each time point it was recorded. Now that you have completed this information, let's go back to the data template workbook. If there is any other significant information that you want to indicate, please enter it in column M in the master sheet. However, this is optional. When each of these steps has been completed, please email your workbook to contact at combase.cc and we will begin processing your data. Thank you for your generous contribution to Combase and please let other know about donating their data. Also, you may be interested to know that each year we offer a travel award to students and researchers who donate significant amounts of data to Combase. This award can be used for a conference within your country or to attend the International Association for Food Protection, annual meeting in the United States, or the International Association for Food Protection's European Symposium. For more information, please visit the help sections in the Combase website or send an email to contact at combase.cc. Thank you.